Hi there. Um, this is a video tutorial on how to do the new Moon's Tier Ace credit score. And I'm going to be describing the process both for Japanese 1.1 and Japanese 1.0. Um, so whichever Japanese version of this game you have, you can do this trick, and it's basically equally as fast. I think that 1.1 is like one second faster if you do everything perfectly, but that's such a small difference in the grand scheme of things that either version is very competitive. Um, so to start, you're going to want to enter Observatory from Terminal Field. Um, the best way to get in here is you can clip through this corner uh, by doing a Hess. If, the downside is you can actually fall out of bounds as well as opposed to just clipping in, like you can actually just clip completely out of bounds and fall. Um, but if you get ISG, that won't happen. So you can do like an ISG Hess and not lose any time. However, since this is Japanese, you can get stuck on ledges when um, when you have when you're doing an ISG Hess. So it's possible you're gonna get stuck in that corner over there. Um, this corner. You might get stuck in this corner while you're trying to Hess, and then you would just end up doing like this kind of a thing, as opposed to like actually Hessing. Anyway, that's what you would do. You can also do a staircase hover, but that's like really slow and costs a lot of bombs. Um, you can also recoil flip through here, but I'm not very good at doing the recoil flip instead of the Hess. You can do a recoil flip as well. Um, so yeah, just pick your pair out of those. I usually go for the Hess, but it's up to you. And then you're going to want to enter through this one. <coughs> so the first thing we're going to want to do is the heat manipulation. Um, so I just like to target that wall up here, like this one, at the bottom of the red staircase, and like the same wall that the yellow staircase is on. And then I just like to do about two side hops. If you do it far to the right, you might only want to do one, but, um, yeah, two side hops, <laughs> and then basically, if you can, you're going to want to try to back up over this, and then do a side hop so that you get kind of in the middle here, um, and then the first thing you're going to want to do is drop a bomb and back walk through the, um, through the loading transition, so, like that. Cool. Um, now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drop another bomb, but you need to be, you need to also allocate a charge then. So if you can see where I am right now, like I'm right up against the plane of blackness here. So I don't want to be quite this close. Um, I like to be around where the line is. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but... There's like a horizontal grout line in the brick. I like to be like approximately there or like slightly forward of it um, before the point of blackness. So like here's a pretty good spot. So now what you're going to want to do is I like to hold target. You don't have to hold target. Um, I just find it makes it easier. Um, so you're going to press bomb, shield drop really quickly, hold forward on the control stick, and then hesitate for a little bit and then press press and hold B. Um, the reason you want to hesitate for a little bit is that if you don't, uh, you're not going to walk far enough forward to where you don't get hit by the bomb. That's not necessarily a problem, but I prefer to just keep my health through this um, because you don't want to accidentally get like hurt health or something like that. Um, so anyway, just to repeat, it's going to be bomb, so you're holding target, bomb shield, um, forward on the control stick, wait like a split second, and then press and hold B. So let me demonstrate that really quickly. Like that. Um, also, I just realized that I don't have uh, magic. Let me fix that. Magic. Okay, there. It shouldn't matter, but you are going to have magic because you have to get magic to get out of first cycle. Um, so I'll just show it how it is. Okay, so now... Just roll forward, um, side hop, still you get to this pot, and then break it. 
Then side hop back to the middle of the room, and then we're gonna do that thing with the back walk and the bomb drop again, so like that. Okay. And now here, um, turn around to face the camera, and then press Ocarina, and you're gonna play Inverted Sauna Time. The reason we turn around there is that the balloon is really laggy. And um, if you're face like the the ocarina camera always makes it so you face Link. Um, so yeah, if we just don't ever have to look at the balloon, that saves frames. Um, okay, so now here you're gonna want to press yes to this, and then it's gonna play the cutscene with like the um, like the white and gray circles, where Link's like spinning around. What you want to do is want to mash to get through that cutscene really quickly. Um, because when you mash, it, it makes the cutscene go faster, which is A, a good thing. And B, it's actually required for this because um, for some reason, when Nintendo made this game, they um, and they made it to where you can make the cutscene go faster by mashing, they didn't actually clear all the memory that gets allocated for that cutscene. Um, so we're basically allocating like part of that memory that was used during that cutscene, which is important for this heat manipulation. So anyway, just to summarize, you're going to hit A to um, to say yes to this, and then you're going to mash A and B, or you could just mash A or just B, whichever whichever you want, but I like to mash A and B, um, especially on an N64 controller because it's really comfy to just do both because my thumb can be across like both of them at once. Um, and you can also mash B on this screen as well, and it's not gonna like cancel you out of it. So I basically just start mashing A and B like as soon as the song starts playing. So anyway, I'm gonna start mashing A and B now. And um, you can see that the cutscene ends really fast. Okay, um, so we did that. And now this is the last step here. Um, so again, I like to be just a little bit farther ahead of this route line here. And then we're gonna do the same thing where we Drop bomb, hold forward, and then press B. So, like this. Um, you'll know if you did it right, because... You'll hear the cucko clucking. Um, and the goal is to hear that cluck before the bomb blows up. Um, but after you've started charging the spin. So, like... If you're too close to the plane, that plane of blackness, and you, um, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. If you're too close to the plane and you, like, hold forward and press B, if you start charging the spin after you hear the cutco clucking, that means you were too close to the plane. So you want to step back a little bit if that happens to you. Um, likewise, if you see the bomb blow up before you hear the cutco clucking, that means that you drop the bomb too soon. Most likely you dropped it too far away from the plane. Um, so that's like a good way to gauge how close or far you are. If, if you don't get the spin off before you hear the cucko, you're too close. And if you, um, if the bomb explodes before you hear the cucko, you're too far. So you just want to be like kind of in between those two. Anyway, um, so now we can go back in here. And now we're going to um, get inverted cam. And I'm really bad at inverted cam, so this is going to take me a few tries. Um, but it's okay, we'll get it. Uh, is that going to work? I think that'll work. Okay, um, so as far as where you drop this bomb, you want it to hit your shield, but you don't want it to hit the pots. Um, so the place I like to line up is like on this, this line of this hexagon here. Um, and I like to be kind of in the middle of it, like up and down. But I like to be a little bit closer to the pots than like, so like this is perfectly straddled. I like to be just like a little bit closer to the pots than that, kind of like here. It's kind of hard to see because the plant likes to get in the way, um, but anyway. So then you're going to drop this bomb and then get over here. And uh, that time I rolled too early. So, we're just gonna try again. Okay, uh, that time I rolled too late. <laughs> we'll get this.
Okay, you're gonna let go of target about when you get to the tunnel before you enter the loading transition. And then um, you're gonna back walk through. Now, I dropped that pot there, and what that means is that the heat manip didn't actually work. Um, I'm not sure whether that's because I messed it up just now. I feel like I did everything right, but it's possible I messed something up. It could also be because I'm doing this on KZ, and KZ messes with the actor heat. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and blame it on that, <laughs> just for the sake of saving my saving my face. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So normally you'd still have the pot in your hand, so I'm just gonna go grab one of these pots to demonstrate. Um, here, we'll grab this one. So normally you'd have an invisible pot in your hand if you're doing this on not KZ, like an actual vanilla copy of the game. Um, so now it's going to depend whether you have 1.0 or 1.1. I'm going to explain 1.0 first. We'll just go in order. Um, so if you have 1.0, you're going to want to come over to this corner by the staircase with this pot, and you're going to want to target this wall here. And then you're going to want to do some ESSing to the right. Um, and I'll show you where you want to stop. So we're almost at the stopping point. Um, okay, so I'm going to explain what the visual cue that I use for this is. So I like to look for the frame before, or I guess it would be, yeah, yeah, I guess it would be before. Um, so basically, as you're turning, there's one frame where Link's sword, you can just barely see it behind his hat, um, like the hilt of it. And then the frame after that, you can see it a little better. And that's the frame we want. It's like the second frame where you can see Link's sword. Um, so it should be this frame. Um, I'll, I'll show the frame where you can barely see it at all. Yeah, so see how you can just barely see the hilt of this sword sticking out from behind his hat? Um, actually, wait. No, I messed this up. That says A94. That should say A64. Okay. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm, uh, I have my angles up here on the screen. Um, so yeah, this wall has an angle of 2 AAC, and what you want is an angle of A64, or 1.0. Oops. Okay, I turned way too far away. There we go. That's the correct angle. Um, so A64, that's the angle you want, and you can see the visual cue I use. It's the second frame where you can see the sword. Um, let me show again what the first frame where you can see the sword looks like. Oh shoot, I must see. Okay, so this is, I think, the third frame where you can see the sword, I believe. So that's not the one you want. That's the second frame where you can see the sword, so that that is the one you want. And then... That's the frame where you can just, like, barely see the tip of the sword sticking out from behind his head. So th those are the visual cues I use. You can feel free to form your own visual cues, but that's just what I like to look for. Um, so anyway... Um, at this point, once you're at A64, now you won't see A64 on your screen when you're doing a speedrun, so you're going to have to find a visual cue that works for you. Um, you can use the sword one that I use, or you can pick your own. It's up to you. But anyway, once you get there, you're going to want to press R to shield drop the pot. Um, normally it won't push you forward like that, because the stale reference pot doesn't actually have collision. But anyway, once you do that, uh, go up onto the staircase and target this railing here. That'll give you an angle of D563. Um, and then you're going to want to ESS again to the right again, like last time. And um, you're going to want to go until 2AC3, I believe? 2CA3. So this frame. Um, now let me explain the visual cue I use. So if you look, Link has like a sash across his chest, which is where like his sword sheath is like attached to his back. Um, now when he's not doing like that idle pose, like like this pose, this is the pose that you want for the visual cue that I use. Um, not the one where he's like doing the stuff with his boots like now. But yeah, when he's just standing still, if you see the, um, the sash, it like almost entirely covers his right arm. 
you just see a little bit of that arm peeking out over the top. And so that's the visual cue that I use. It's like when the sash is parallel to the arm and where I can just see a little bit peeking out over the top. Um, let me show you what the other two frames look like. So if you go too far, you'll see that frame and you don't see any of his arm peeking out over the top. And if you are too early, you'll see, I think it's this frame. Um, so yeah, you'll see the entire arm peeking out over the top. So the one you want is where there's just a little bit of arm peeking out over the top, which is this one. So you'll get an angle of 2AC3 and you want to target, which will store it in the like right half of that number that I have on the screen. Um, that The right half is your last targeted angle, so that's what we were trying to get there and we got it. Um, so now you're just going to want to come over here. It's not like super precise where you stand. You just kind of want to be, you want to be far enough, far enough back so that you're not going to like hit the wall. Um, and you're, you basically, you're basically just trying to get like kind of into the tunnel. But like if, if you're up here, you're going to be doing two jump slashes. So you're going to hit the wall and that's going to mess it up. So just be like kind of over here. Um, probably where this corner in the floor is a decent visual cue until you get used to it. Like, uh, the corner of the room's like right here, and then there's this plank, and then here's the second plank. That's probably like a decent idea of where to stand when you're just getting used to this. Um, but anyway, so what you're gonna do, it's a lot of inputs really fast. Um, this is probably the craziest sequence of inputs you're gonna have to do for this entire thing. Um, so what it is, is you're going to want to not be targeting. And you're going to want to um, shield drop the bomb on the first possible frame. Um, now that sounds like you can't do it, RTA, um, but you actually can because the bomb takes two frames to show up in the stand from the frame that you press it. Um, so like basically there's the frame you press it, and then there's a frame where he just has nothing in his hands after that. And then there's a frame where he has the bomb. So your goal is to be shielding on the frame where he has the bomb in his hands for the first time. But you can actually press shield and bomb at the same time. You can press them on the same frame. And then as long as you hold shield for at least three frames, um, you're going to be fine. Uh, so basically you have three frames to press shield. You can either press it the same frame you press the bomb, the frame after, or two frames after. So it's a three frame trick. It's the same as a super slide. Um, it's very easy to do RTA. In fact, it's a much easier than a super slide, I would say. Um, but anyway, so yeah, the first part of this is you're going to want to press bomb and shield either at the same time or shield just ever so slightly after bomb. I try to press them at the same time, um, but if you press shield too early, then you're not actually going to drop the bomb. So that. That's not like a huge deal because you can easily correct that by just letting go of shield and trying again. Um, but yeah, anyway, basically just press them at the same time, TLDR. Um, <laughs> and then what you're going to do. So, oh, actually, one more thing that I forgot to mention. Notice how my sword is drawn here. Um, when you get someone on the staircase, your sword isn't drawn. Uh, so what I did is I like backflipped and then drew my sword in a backflip because that doesn't lose any time. You do need your sword to be drawn when you drop the bomb because that actually affects the position of it ever so slightly. Because like Link has to like sheath his sword before like putting the bomb, like dropping the bomb. So it just like very slightly alters the position of the bomb and it matters. You need to have your sword out when you drop the bomb, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, so anyway, yeah, my sword's out, and I would normally drop bomb. Um, but there's one more thing that we'd like to be able to do during the shield situation, and so I'm going to demonstrate that here. So when you press R, Link like kind of crouches down to the ground. If you press B before he finishes crouching, you quick draw your sword like that. So like if, if I wait until I'm all the way crouched and I press B, I do a crouch stab. But if I... Okay, that time I was too slow. Oops. <laughs> okay, I, I'm being slow now, but that first time I did it was when I... There we go. Yeah, so there you go. 
that that's quick draw on your sword. And the way you do it is you need to press B before Link fully gets onto the ground. It's a pretty tight time window. Normally you can press B sooner than you press shield, like this. That time I press B before I press shield, and that makes it a lot easier. But we're not going to be able to do that with this setup because um, we have to drop the bomb. So basically the ideal situation is um, drop bomb, press shield, and then very quickly press B to quick draw your sword. If that doesn't happen, you're fine. You'll just need to do a crouch stab instead, but it'll make the timing for the rest of this setup a lot more precise. Um, so, like, if you can get the quick draw, it's going to make your life easier. But if you can't, it's no big deal, um, because we can do this. If the crouch stab happens, we can still work with that. You just have to be fast. So anyway, um, that was a lot of words. So I'm just going to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So... Um, it's going to be drop the bomb on the first frame and then quickly press B. Okay, that time I didn't do it right. But I, but I got a crouch stab, and the crouch stab is fun. Uh, also, I just realized that I um, lost my targeting angle there. So let me, let me fix that. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to save my position right here. So that way, if that happens again, we can just <laughs> reload it. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate that a few times really quickly. Okay, so that time I got a crouch stab, which is fine. Um, yeah, I got a crouch stab again. Again, we can work with the crouch stab. This will work with the crouch stab. I'm just trying to show how you can do it with a, uh, with a quick draw. There we go. All right, that's me. It's pretty hard to get the quick draw, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I get it sometimes, but I definitely don't get it every single time. Um. <laughs> okay, that. I, I'm pressing B too soon now. Okay, well, regardless, you can get a quick draw. Um, it's possible. You just need to be quick about it. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Quick draw and. Um, quick draw and. Crouch level work. So anyway, once you get your sword out by either quick drawing or crouch stabbing, um, what you're going to want to do is two jump slashes. And you're going to want to do them as fast as you possibly can. So like, what I like to do is... Um, so basically, like, let's say you did a crouch stab. Then I would target, and then I would just mash A really quickly. I don't know if you saw my A button in the lower edge of the screen there. Um, but it was just mashing really fast. So that's what I like to do, just to make sure that I jump slash quickly, um, like as quick as I can. Really the quickest would be if you timed it, but it's not that precise, so I'd rather just mash so I don't have to think about it. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's demonstrate that like on quick succession here. So uh, drop bomb first possible frame, get your sword out, and then do two jump slashes. Okay, good. Let me demonstrate that again. Okay. So that's most of it. There's one more thing you have to do. And the thing you have to do is a diagonal slash like this. Um, the way you do a diagonal slash is you, you flick right or down right on your control stick and you press B. Um, it's the same thing if you've ever done an ocarina dive before. It's the same thing as that. Um, so you, it, you can see my input display, my stick, like, goes crazy for a sec before I press B. But anyway, this is what you're going to want to do. And then, there's one more thing that you have to pay attention to here, which is that, um, you're going to want to untarget before the slash is finished. So it doesn't actually, your targeting bars don't go away really that quickly, like, they take a while. The targeting bars don't actually matter. What matters is that you're not pressing Z anymore. Um, so, you basically just want to not be pressing Z by the time Link finishes the slash. And the reason why is, like, I don't know if you can see this, but... So, like, that's what happens when you're targeting. Link kind of takes, like, another step forward. If you untarget, he, like, takes a step back. And that's what we want, is we want the step back. 
So like forward when you're holding target, he like pulls himself forward. And then if we let go of target, he like steps back with his right foot. Instead of pulling his left foot forward, he like steps back with his right foot to where his left foot is. So that's what we want. Um, because if we don't do that, then the bomb's not going to hit us at all. And we need the bomb to hit us. So anyway, let me demonstrate this setup all in one go, just to um, show you what I'm talking about. So... Oh, whoops. I messed that up. <laughs> yeah, so you shouldn't be targeting when you're starting. That's what I missed. That's what I messed up there. So untarget and then do the setup. There we go. Um, now that gave me an, eagle, an angle of 2e24. That's actually not the angle I want. The angle I want is 2e1c, which is 8 units less than that angle. It's a very small difference. But the reason that that difference happens is whether your sword is drawn when you drop the bomb or not. Um, so that's why it's important to have your sword drawn before you drop the bomb. So like I said, I just usually draw it on a backflip on the way over. So let me demonstrate that again with my sword out, and you'll see what angle I get. You get 2e1c, which is the exact angle we want. Um, and now that you have this 2e1c angle, you're going to want to do 31 ESS to the left. So it's like 3 quarters of a full rotation. Um, and the visual cue I use here is I'm looking for... So, okay, this is the frame before the frame that we want. And what I look at is the, like, the color, like, Link's skin um, behind his shield on his right arm. You can see just a little bit of it on the screen. Like, this is the first frame you can see it at all. We want the second frame where we can see it at all. So, let me do one more turn. There we go. Now, that's the second frame we can see it. We can see a lot more of his arm now. So, that's the visual cue I use. You can use whatever cue you want. But now you'll see that we have an angle of 8142CA3. Um, which in uh, the assembly language for the CPU inside this Nintendo 64 console that I'm playing on, that means to jump to um, the file name that you just created after your last reset. If you've seen any percent before, you know that you have to create a file name after you reset on top of the Sonic Time, or after you place Sonic Time on top of the clock tower, you reset and you create a new file. Um, so what this 8142CA3 means is to jump to that file name that you created. Um, so anyway, that is going to get activated, like that, that instruction is going to be followed by the Nintendo 64 when you press Ocarina. So I'm going to press Ocarina. And um, you can't really see, but there, if you go upstairs in the observatory, there is, well, there's the guy who like tells you how to use the telescope and stuff. And then right next to him, he has the moon sphere in a glass cave. So what this does is it brings the moon sphere into view. And um, basically every time that the moon sphere is on the camera, it's um, it's going to run some code to update um, its visual appearance. We call it drawing. So like it'll draw itself. Um, but what we did with that pot is we just made it to where it's looking at our angle instead. Um, and our angle says to jump to the file name that we just created on top of the clock tower. So that's basically what's happening. Whenever the moon steer is on screen, it's going to execute whatever our angle is. So we don't ever want it to be on screen before our angle is correct because it's going to cause a crash. But since our angle is correct now, um, when we play off arena, the ceiling of the observatory comes into view, and um, the the moon sphere also comes into view. And if I was playing on the um, on the actual version of the game right now, the pot I don't know if you see the pot on the left there by the globe. That pot wouldn't show up anymore. I don't know why that happens. I honestly don't. But if you did everything right, the pot shouldn't show up. And when you place on a time, which is the next step in the puzzle. That blue ring that appears around Link, that won't show up either um, if you did everything right and you're playing on like the vanilla version of the game and not on KZ like I'm playing right now. So anyway, um, you would, assuming all that matches, like you press Ocarina, the pot disappears, you don't see the blue ring effect, um, you're good to press A here and you'll get the credits for 
Um, but obviously that's not our situation here because I'm playing on KZ and I also want to show the 1.1 setup. So that whole thing was the 1.0 setup. Um, so if you're a one, if you're someone who has a 1.0 card, you can stop watching this video now. There's nothing else for you, um, because I'm just going to explain the differences for 1.1. Um, in this video, I'm also going to have a list of the file names that you can use. Um, you do have to have specific file names, and they need to be different for each version. 1.0 versus 1.1 will have different file names. Um, so I'll put those in the description rather than try to talk about them here, because. I don't know how to pronounce any of the Japanese <laughs> so I'll just I'll just leave them in the description for you. But anyway, so yeah, that was the 1.0 setup, and actually, let me just run through the whole thing really quickly, um, just to demonstrate one last time to let it sink in. Um, so you're gonna come over here with the invisible pot. And you're going to do a bunch of ESS turns until you get to the second frame where Link's uh, sword is visible, which is the one after this one, and after this one, that one. A64, you're going to shield drop, you're going to target this wall, do ESS turns until you see Link's um, arm just barely peeking out over the uh, sash across his chest. You're going to come over here, you're going to backflip and draw a sword, and then you're going to stand approximately here and do the setup. And then you're going to do... Yes, this turns to the left, if I can do them. If I can do them at this camera angle. There we go. And you're looking for the second frame where you can see Link's skin, which is this one. And then you're going to press Ocarina and place on the time. And that's it for 1.0. You can see how fast that was, and I was, like, stopping to explain things. Imagine how fast that is when I'm not explaining things. Like, this is a really fast setup. It's awesome. Um, but anyway, that was 1.0. So now for 1.1. Um, uh, I'm going to leave a timestamp in the description for 1.1 people so they can just jump straight to this part. Um, so you're, you would normally have an invisible pot in your hand, so I'm just going to grab, like, this one to demonstrate. Okay, so you're going to want to target either this wall or this wall. Either of these two boxes will work. Um, they both give you AAB4 as your angle. So you can target either one. I like to target the one by the cucko, um, but that's just personal preference. And also, the main reason I do is because it's closer to where we're going next, which is like in the back of the room. But anyway, so yeah, target either of those two to get AAB4. And then you're going to do ESS turns to the left. And you're going to stop um, at a certain point, as usual. Um, the visual cue that I like to use is if you look at... So it's on the left side of the screen, but it's like the right side of Link. You can see the like white outline of his shield um, on his right side there. So you want... Um, you want that to not be visible at all. So this is the frame before the good frame. Um, you can see just a little bit of that gray of his shield over by his sash. So you want to do... You want to do like that. Okay. So this is the frame where you can't see any of his shield on the left... Or his right, the left-hand side of the camera. That's the correct frame. You want D24 as your angle. Um, and then if you're too... If you accidentally went one frame too few, that would look like this. Um... It doesn't look that much different, so usually what I like to do is I just like to turn too much and then adjust until the first frame where I can't see the shield like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so once you get D24, you just want to shield drop the pot, and then you wanna, you're want to you going to want to come over here. Um, now notice that when Tattle sees the Scarecrow, she's going to turn blue and like surround it. If you target right now, you're going to target the Scarecrow. Likewise, Tattle's going to turn green if you're kind of looking at the Cucko. And if you press target, you're going to target the Cucko. You don't want to do either of these things. Um, both of them might crash, because they might bring the Moon Steer into view. And even if they don't crash, they're going to mess up your targeting a bit. So, um, what I like to do is, if you're fast... So the, actually, let me, let me stop for a second. 
The box you want to target is this one. This one that I'm walking into. The downside is, is it's right between the Scarecrow and the Kekko, so it's, it's really a pain to not have Tattle bomb you. The other downside is that this corner of the box gives you the wrong angle. This gives you A9 FE. That's not the angle we want. We want the angle that's like all of the box except for the corner. This A, B, A3 one. So you see how I just targeted the Scarecrow right there? That probably would have crashed if I was playing on the actual version of the game right now. Um, but yeah, so like you can target this box. It's a pretty wide range. Um, you can target it like all the way over here, and it'll still give you A, B, three. See how like Link is not even like he's he's not even like facing the box. Like he's he's way to the left of the box. Like his face is completely left of the box, and we're still getting the right. Angle. Um, you can also target it like pretty close to the corner. It's not like directly in the corner. Okay, that time I targeted the Kucko. So like pretty close to the corner will still give you a B E three. Let's see how close I can get. See that's still A B E three. So there's a wide range on this box that gives you the right angle. Um, the only thing you don't want to do is be like directly in this corner here where the box turns like dark brown. Like if you're in the dark brown spot, it's gonna give you the wrong angle. Um, but yeah, so the goal is to target like anywhere that's not in the corner. So like anywhere from like here. So like all the way over here without targeting the Kekko, um or the Scarecrow. So the way I like to do that is if you target this box, or not that box, if you target like, eh, if you target like sort of this direction, or this direction, like one of those two directions, just sort of like this to where you can't really see the Kekko anymore, it'll stop Tattle from like trying to talk to the Kekko. Um, so yeah, I just like to target kind of this way, and then you can just target... Okay, that, that's how I messed up. Yeah. But you, you can see the idea, right? Like, if you just get the camera to where a tattle is not bothering you for the Kekko... See, that time she's bothering me for the Kekko. So yeah, there we go. I got my angle. Um, another thing you can do is if you're really fast, you can actually, like, outrun tattle. Well, okay, that, that's kind of <laughs> I swear I've gotten this to work before. It might just, it might not be about being fast, it might just be based on the camera angle. Through. There we go. See? See how Tattle's like trying to talk to the Kako? Well, she was. She was trying to talk to the Kako even though I'm standing here and getting this angle. Um, yeah, there we go. So. It, I, I guess that has more to do with the Kako cycle than anything, um, but you might be able to just book it here and target this and be fine. Um, or you might not be. And if you're not, then you can just do the backup of targeting like kind of this direction and then walking into the box and then targeting. Regardless, you want this A, B, E, 3 angle. And so now that you have it, you're going to sidewalk away. Um, the main reason, there's two reasons. One is that we don't want to target the Scarecrow. And the other is that we need to be in the tunnel anyway. So we're just going to go into the tunnel. And you have this A, B, E, 3 angle. And you're going to want to do ESS turns again. Um, the frame we're looking for, the, the visual cue I use is when Link is directly facing the So like this frame, Link is facing slightly to the left of the camera. So I'm going to do like one ESS right. One is this, right? There we go. Now Link is directly facing the camera. That gives us the 2D53 angle we want. Um, if you're one frame too early, that's I messed it up. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think that's one. Yeah, this is one frame too early. So see how Link is facing like slightly to the right of directly at the camera? He's like just a little to the right. So I'm gonna do one ESS left. Oops, that was two ESS left. So now I'm gonna do one ESS right to compensate. There we go. 2D53. That's the angle we want. Link is directly facing the camera. Um, so we're gonna target at this angle. And we're gonna do one ESS to the left. Oops, that was two. 
Okay, there we go. That's that's where we want to be. Um, so we're gonna place a bomb and do one horizontal slash. That's it. This is a lot easier than the 1.0 setup. Um, so we're just gonna place a bomb, do one horizontal slash, and spam it. That will also give us an angle of 2e1c, which is the exact same angle that we get in 1.0. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if just like bomb damage like gives you certain favored angles. Um, but since it's still 2e1c, it's gonna be the same as 1.0. So we're just gonna do 31 ESS to the left. And um, the visual cue I'm looking for, this one's a little bit harder to describe, but. So I look at the back of Link's shield for this one. Um, you see how like the inside of it is brown? So when Link isn't like looking around and stuff when he's just like standing there, you can see there's like a little bit of the brown on the back of his shield visible on this frame. But if I go one frame more, if I go one frame more. Okay, that was too many frames. That was two frames. So here you can see all of the brown. So that means that we went too far. Um, you want it to where you can see like 80 to 90 percent of the brown on the back of the shield. Here we go. So there's like a little bit of his shield like on the right side of it where we can't quite see the brown because it's obscured by the um, the silver on the front of the shield. Like there's just that little tiny sliver where we can see like the blue of the Hylian symbol and stuff like that. Um, so th this is the frame that we want and it gives you 814 2d53. And again, this angle on GP 1.1, when interpreted as code, means jump to the newly created file name, the one that you made on top of the clock tower. And the way that we execute this code that we currently have in our angles right now is to bring the moon's tier into the camera. Um, because we modified the moon's tier's draw function so that it's actually pointing the draw function pointer. So that's, instead of pointing at the draw function, it's pointing at our angles. So if you press Ocarina, it's going to bring the ceiling of the observatory into view, and it's going to do, it's going to uncall the moon sphere, which basically just means start drawing the moon sphere. Um, but it can't actually draw it now because we made it look at our angles instead of the actual draw function. So, um, so now our angle is causing the CPU to jump to that filing that we made which is then jumping to the other file name, the one that we're playing on. And then um, that file name is adjusting the next cutscene value in memory. Um, so if we start a cutscene right now by say, playing Song of Time, and hitting yes, then we'll do, we'll get the credits roll. Um, one thing to note, if you skipped here and didn't watch the 1.0 part, um, if you did this right, this pot that you see on the left of the screen here, that shouldn't be there. If you did everything right, that'll stop drawing too, so it'll just be invisible and you won't see it. Um, likewise, if you did everything right and you place on a time, this like blue spinning ring effect that goes around Link, that won't show up either. Um, so if, the, if neither of those two things show up, you know that you did this right. Um, at which point you can hit A and um, it will start the sauna time cutscene, but instead of it being the sauna time cutscene, it'll actually be the moon is getting evaporated cutscene. So if you hit A here, you'll do the credits warp and everything will be perfect. Um, so let's just go through that one more time just to do it all at once. So. You're going to have the invisible pot. Um, you're going to target this box here. Oops, I ESS the wrong way. You're going to ESS until you can barely not see Link's shield, which is this frame. If I go one frame more, you'll see his shield. Just barely in the left corner. Or in the left corner of the screen, the right corner of Link. I keep forgetting this. Um, so yeah, D24 is the angle you want. You're going to shield drop. So you're gonna come over here, target this box for an angle of A, B, E3. Be careful to not be too far in the corner. Like, don't target it here because you'll get the wrong angle. Um, and if you accidentally target the Kako, you might crash. So be careful not to target unless Tattle is not currently attracting to the Kako like that. 
Um, if she is attracting to the Kaiko, you're just going to get a different camera angle, so that way that doesn't happen. So anyway, you get this angle, and then you come over here, and you're going to ESS to link the space of the camera, 2D53, just like that. You're going to target, do one ESS left. Oops, that was two ESS. One ESS left, there we go. Place a bomb, do one slash. And then you're going to do 31 ESS to the left. And we're looking for the when we can just barely see, or when there's like a little sliver of the brown on the back of his shield that we can't see. Alternatively, you could look for when there's just a little sliver of the Hylian symbol that we can see. So it'll be the frame after this. There we go. Now we can just barely see the blue on the outside, and there's like a little bit of the brown on the inside that we can't see. So we have our angle, 814D, 2D53. We're going to press Ocarina. The moon steer is going to come into view. It's going to cause that pot to disappear, that one that you see on the screen right now. We're going to place on a time. That blue rain effect isn't going to show up. Um, and then once on a time finishes, we're just going to hit A. And in fact, I will go ahead and demonstrate that now. So if you hit A, I did this wrong, so it's not going to work. And this is also on KZ, so it's not going to work. But see this cutscene, the song of time cutscene, this white one where there's like all the spinning stuff and all the rupees are falling out. Instead of that, it's going to play the moon of that rain cutscene. If you do that, if you like. So, anyway, that is the tutorial for the new Observatory Credits Warp on both Japanese 1.0 and Japanese 1.1. I hope you found this helpful. Um, I would love to see more 80% runners. Um, both versions are basically equally fast. If you do everything perfectly, 1.1 might be like one second faster, but it's really hard to get a timing call on something that's like that close. So for all intents and purposes, they're both fine. So just, you can just get any Japanese cartridge of this game and do it. And um, you can run any percent with me. Won't it be fun? <laughs> but yeah, um, that's any percent. It's so much nicer now that we don't have to deal with the bomb shoes. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed and uh, I'm sure I'll be posting more videos soon, so stay tuned. Bye-bye.